while the clock is a ticking down to the US presidential election, investors still lack full clarity on the key policy stances of both candidates. On October 1st, the vice presidential debates took place between Tim Waltz and the GD Wands. The only scheduled debate between presidential nominees was held on September 9th. And these debates offered millions of viewers a rare chance to form their own opinions directly. Of course, presidential debates might not change voters' minds, but they can have a profound impact. For example, Joe Biden's poor performance forced him to withdraw from the campaign on July 21. Perhaps for this reason, Donald Trump decided not to participate in the debate on October 23. He stated that it would be too late to hold this event. However, the underlying reason is not that the bad timing. He actually admitted that his new opponent could win this battle. However, nearly a month has passed since then. During this time, the Republican Party has been actively trying to improve its position ahead of the upcoming elections, investing significant resources into this effort. As uh, the US presidential race is coming to an end, major oil companies are becoming some of the key sponsors of Donald Trump's campaign, and the executives uh, believe that a Republican victory would be much better from the industry than a win by Kamala Harris. As for the economic plans of the future presidents uh, themselves, they differ a little from a current policy. Much will depend on the composition of the US Senate and House of Representatives. And the only economic issue where Kamala Harris and Donald Trump express a polar opposite viewpoints is taxation. During his uh, four years as president, Donald Trump enacted one of the most significant tax cuts in the country's history. His new program pr proposes an even tougher stance on the trade and tariffs. Trump even credits the current state of the US economy to his own achievements. In his view, had um, he not lowered taxes in 2018, the situation now would be the worst. The beliefs that the Democrats uh, hindered the completion of his reforms, which is why the U.S. now faces the risk of a looming recession. That's one of Trump's main campaign points, is the further cuts of a corporate taxes. And this move would make American companies more competitive, particularly against China. On the other hand, Kamala Harris urged uh, that taxes need to be raised, especially income taxes on the high earners. Lower income Americans would not be affected by this measure. Harris' main argument is establishing social justice. The additional revenue would be directed toward expanding social programs supporting minorities, and various communities, including increasing unemployment benefits and the aid to migrants. According to the current vice president, the current social tension is partly caused by Donald Trump's tax policies. During the televised debates, Donald Trump did not miss the chance to call Kamala Harris a Marxist. It's uh, easy to guess that industrial companies support Trump's ideas while the high-tech and financial sectors back Kamala Harris. If Trump wins and starts reducing taxes for businesses, American companies, particularly industrial ones, will be able to increase profitability. And this will lead to a rise in the industrial sector capitalization which means more direct investments and a higher production volumes. So how will this affect the market? There will be an inflow of a capital into the US economy, which will boost demand for the greenback. Meanwhile, United States imports may decline. As the imports fall, the supply of dollars in the global market will decrease, creating an additional factor for the long-term strengthening of the US currency.
Kamala Harris plans to favor the U.S. high-tech sector and financial industry. Since IT companies are not right to uh, physical production, they can diversify and move parts of their operations to offshore zones. At the same time, the income taxes of the executives, which should have been paid in the United States, will hardly be touched by democratic reforms. And these taxes are mostly uh, circulated in the global markets. Various schemes to optimize financial flows also allow IT companies to avoid taxes. However, increased social programs promise additional funds for these companies, particularly in the green energy projects, which Democrats classify as a part of the social sphere. The financial sector will manage the additional funds directed toward all social programs. In other words, the financial industry will profit from handling government money. Additionally, some of these funds will flow back to banks in the form of deposits and direct investments in the stock market, similar to what happened after previous increases in the U.S. social spending. Harris's program is likely to lead to further growth in the stock market, driven mainly by rising high-tech company uh, valuations. Banks will manage additional capital, which will also go to the stock and the debt markets. However, this stock market growth will likely coincide with a continued decline in the industrial sector, leading to more imports and rising national debt. These factors could contribute to a long-term drop in the United States dollar. The primary focus, of course, is on the medium and the long-term outlook for the US dollar. In the short term, the dominant factor influencing the dollar index will be the prospects for monetary easing by the Fed Reserve. After a series of rate hikes that began on March 15, 2022, the US regulator has some pushed its uh, benchmark interest rate to 5.5%. And now the central bank has started to reverse course in its ongoing battle against inflation. Moreover, the start of the rate cutting cycle was uh, quite sharp. On September 18, the regulator lowered its benchmark rate by 50 basis points and was widely expected to make a similar move at its November meeting. However, the likelihood of a second 50 basis point interest rate cut sharply diminished after Jerome Powell delivered a speech at the Economic Forum on September 13. Following the release of the September non-farm payrolls, those expectations vanished entirely. The data revealed an increase of 254,000 jobs. The search reignited confidence that the Fed could indeed pull off a soft landing for the US economy. Nevertheless, US inflation is steadily approaching the Fed's 2% target, creating room for a more gradual easing cycle. This means that the dollar index, which measures the greenback's performance against a basket of other major currencies, is expected to lose value, albeit not as sharply as in September 2024. Forecasts suggest that the Fed will maintain a dovish monetary policy in 2025, provided the economic conditions in the United States and abroad remain stable. This could lead to further losses for the dollar, particularly if the US economy begins to slow while Europe and Asia recover at a faster pace. From a technical perspective, the US dollar index is currently trading in a broad range, considering that its value against the basket of six major currencies fluctuated between 100 and 107 points in early 2024, 
these marks can be seen as a key support and resistance levels. If the dollar index breaks below the critical psychological threshold of 100 points, a bearish trend could be confirmed, potentially driving the index down to the 95 and 97 area. A bull case scenario is possible if the index breaks above the resistance level of 107 points. In theory, the dollar index could see its strongest rally of the year. Uh, but this scenario is unlikely with the most traders not to factor in it into the strategies. Still, current market conditions and potential global macroeconomic risks may continue to back up the dollar as a safe haven asset. Given the growing unpredictability of its potential next president, the United States itself may soon need a security guarantee. Online election predictions show that Kamala Harris has a higher chance of winning the US presidency in November. However, it's still diminishing. According to predicted an online prediction platform, the Harris Trump Earth stood at 53 to 51% earlier this week. By comparison, immediately following the October 1st debates, the gap was more pronounced at 55 to 47. With the Trump victory seen as a potential Potential risk for higher inflation and stronger dollar, the US currency is in a winning position for now. September's non farm payroll data is another factor contributing to the dollar's strengths. At the same time, Kamala Harris, late in the presidential race, is looking increasingly less convincing to suggest that the dollar may yet stage another uh, to new highs. For the latest developments it's in financial markets, be sure to watch our regular video reviews on InstaForex TV. Subscribe and stay tuned with us.